Hello, my crafty loving friends. Welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Today we're going to work on this riser that I got out of the clearance section at Christmas Tree Shop. And I just love it. I love the base of it. It's very cool. And I actually like the top as well and all these little beaded uh, parts around the side. But the top is not going to fit what I'm looking for. I have this barn picture uh, of a winter scene from Zazzle and I will put the link down in the description and I want to put that on the top so that it will go along with some of my Christmas decor and my table setting that I'm going to have so I'm gonna put this on uh, on here so I'm taking some plaster paint this is uh, Waverly paint and the color is plaster and I'm going to give it a coat all around I give it a light coat and cover up all the flowers and wording and one coat is all that it needed. Taking some Mod Podge once it's dry and I'm going to put a light coat across the top of the riser so that I can add my paper. I'm just going to place that on there and get it as even as possible. Now it doesn't cover the whole thing but I'm going to fix the top and the bottom parts uh, later on and I'll show you how I do that. So I'm taking some plastic wrap and just going over the top and smoothing it out. Once it gets wet it's very fragile and it'll rip so uh, the plastic wrap seems to help. So I just cut off a piece that is hanging over the edge that I won't be using and I put that over the part that didn't get covered in the first uh, laying of the paper. This wasn't quite tall enough either way, so I thought I would center it and then just put uh, pieces of the decoupage paper on either end. I'm just adding little pieces here and there, and this will just add to the distressed part of it because I do want it distressed, so it'll work just fine. Now I'm cutting off another piece of the edge that I won't be using and I'm going to add that to the bottom as well. So I just put a little bit of the Mod Podge on the top and then laid my paper on and now I'm going to do the bottom now that it's centered where I want it and just cover that with a light coat of Mod Podge. Take my plastic wrap and just go over the top. And I'm going to, in a downward motion, take a little bit of sandpaper once that is dry and sand the edges and get that excess paper off. It doesn't take a lot to get that to come off. Now once I got all the excess paper off, I went ahead and put a coat of Mod Podge over the top just to seal that in. Now this is not going to be food safe but you can definitely use a plate over the top of it or just decorations but I would not place food on it. I wiped the edges getting the excess Mod Podge off and I once it was dry I gave it a little bit of a sand on the top to distress it a little bit and it was ready. had a company called Cosway get in touch with me and wanted me to try out one of their Christmas trees. So we're going to go ahead and put that together and see what we think. This is a pre-lit tree so it comes with this cord. It's plugged into the wall and it has three plugs that go with each section of the tree. Letting go of everything but you 
these are the good times. There was a lot of fluffing with this tree trying to open it up. It does come very closed up uh, when it is shipped to you. And of course it'll never go back into shape once you fluff it. But it was uh, not that hard and I expected that to be one of the things that we would have to do. I will have a link down in the description to their website and also any discounts that there may be so that you can check out all the other things they have available. It was actually quite easy to put together and these plugs were fairly easy to get plugged in. There is a certain way to do it but it wasn't very difficult to figure out and you're just stretching out all of your branches and more fluffing. It's, it's just part of getting an artificial tree. It was a surprise. I did not know that I was going to be getting a lighted Christmas tree, so I purchased some lights from Amazon that hadn't come yet. But because this was already lit, I decided I would just go ahead and work on it. So out of putting that all together, that's all the needles that had fallen off it. It wasn't actually that bad for falling apart. And I really like all the different uh, settings that you could put your tree lights at. This is the little box and you just push the button on what you want. I did not do the fast flashing uh, setting on this because it did cause you know some craziness with the camera and you get the gist. It does do a slow fade. It has 11 functions. It does double colors. You can like here you can have the multicolor or just the white. Uh, it will do the multicolored and white at the same time. There's a lot of beautiful colors on there. The one thing that I did notice is that it wasn't as full as the picture that they show you on the website. Uh, it really could probably use some more, uh, maybe a, a garland or something around the middle of it to make it more full if that's what you like. But it actually wasn't bad quality. This was supposed to be a six foot tree and it ended up being uh, about a five foot tree really. Um, I used a drop cloth to go around the bottom just to show you what you could do. And there you go. On to project number three. I found this cute little croc somewhere in my travels, 75 cents somewhere, and I thought I would pick it up and do something with it eventually. So I've had it in my stash and I think I'm ready to do something with it. So I'm going to take some Waverly plaster paint and give that two coats all over to cover up all the design that's on it. I stopped at a Salvation Army recently and I picked up this package it was brand new, never used, of these Christmas themed stamps. They're the clear ones and they're easy to use so I decided that I would pick them up and I could make tags with them or whatever I decided. But today I think I'm going to use the Merriest Yule Cheer and put that on the front of my little crock. I used a little plastic cover that came with it to mount my stamps onto so that I could easily press it onto my crock. So now I'm trying to find out which kind of picture I want to go with it because I did want something else. And I do like this poinsettia so I'm going to stick that on there and that will be my little picture that I can put on the front. Sorry about the camera angle here. It looks like I was kind of off, off the camera just a little bit, but I'm taking some red paint and I'm just going over the stamp with my brush and getting some paint on it so that I can uh, get that stamped onto the front of my crock. So I'm going to take a piece of paper towel and just do a little, uh, just stamp it on there to get some of the paint off so I don't get it too juicy so that it will because it kind of mushes around if you get too much paint on there. So there, I added that on. That looks so pretty. I love the red against that white. Now of course I took some black paint. I'm going to distress the crock with a little bit of black paint around the edges and make it kind of look aged and old and distressed. 
So I'm just going to do highlight basically the around the edges and the handle and around the top. So I decided while I was doing the edges that I would do a little bit around the middle uh, and give it some more distress and just make it look again aged and old. Taking some of my watered down antique wax from Waverly and I'm giving that a coat all around and then wiping it back. This is going to give it a yellowed brown aged look just make it look like it's been around for a while. To knock down some of the darker color that I have on there and get rid of some of the a little bit of the black and blend it in and a little bit of the wax that I had put on to age it I took some sandpaper and just lightly sanding over it so it brings back some of that lighter color onto my crock. Now I'm taking a little bit of the antique wax and I'm just kind of spraying it on with my uh, brush and just giving it some dots, some darker dots all over it just to give it some more dimension and rustic look. I have these cute little Christmas trees that I got off from Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description if you're interested. You get several different sizes and they're pretty cute bottle brushes. I love the little tiny ones. They're adorable. So I picked out which colors that I wanted and grabbed a piece of just some material that I had kicking around. I wrapped it around my little crock and gave it a little knot to give it some color around the top. I'm going to take a piece of paper towel and stick it down inside with a little scrap piece of burlap and I'm going to stick my little trees right in there. I picked one of each color, one bigger one and two smaller ones, and they're stuffed in there pretty good. So I'm going to grab some of my uh, my Spanish moss, and I'm going to stick that right down in. This is going to be the cutest little rustic crock for Christmas. Unfortunately, I didn't get any end pictures for this little crock before I put it down in my booth, but basically you get the picture of what it looks like. I took a little rusty star and put that over the uh, knot of my material, and I think it came out really cute. I hope you like my projects today and now that I have a little tree up I can start working on some Christmas decorations and show you some different fun rustic ideas for your Christmas trees. So don't forget there are links down in the description and also a discount on the tree if you are interested. Please like, share, and subscribe and have a great day.